Hi, it is Monday, October 19th, and welcome to the beginning of another reading vlog. So some updates, I am about 50 pages or less from the end of Fellowship of the Ring. Finally, I have been reading this for so long, but it has been a pleasure. I am really, really enjoying this. I am loving picking it up. The world that Tolkien has created is so beautiful and just so charming, and I love these characters. I love this world, and I cannot wait to continue um, next month with the next phase of this plot. And I'm just really excited by the next time you see me in this reading vlog, I will have finished this. And so I'm gonna wait until then to tell you most of my thoughts because I'm basically done, but I'm really liking it so far. And I mean, I'm liking it better the second time that I've read it, so that's great. The last time we talked, I had just barely started Kindred because so I didn't really have any thoughts, but now I am 108 pages in and I'm really liking this. This is the story of a black woman who is yanked back in time continuously into the antebellum south, pre-civil war south, to save a ancestor of hers who is a future slave owner. And I don't even know how to do this book justice and how I'm talking about it because it's just so good. It is so engaging. This book had the potential to be very repetitive or just to not hold my attention with how repetitive it could be. A lot of times I figured this would be a very character driven book. A lot of times with that I get bored of the plots very easily, but this one, no. This author, Octavia E. Butler, knows how to plot a story to keep you hooked. I am constantly interested. I am constantly just like needing to read more of this book and I'm just I'm loving it right now. This is a hard book to read. It is a very hard book to go into because it is there's there's I'm always so scared going into it for my characters and just it's just a, it's this harrowing situation but I also can't put it down but sometimes it's too intense but like I also cannot put this book down. I'm loving it. This is so good so far. Already, I can tell this deserves all the praise and I'm really, really, really liking it. I am 207 pages into Long Burn, Long Burn by Joe Baker. This is a telling of Pride and Prejudice following the servant's point of view and it's still boring. I'm still not loving it. I don't know what else to say. It has its interesting moments, but for the most part, it's not an interesting book to me. And so I'm just not loving it. I don't know what else to say about it. It manages to surprise me a little bit with some of the things, but not nearly enough for me to like it and for me to excuse it being boring the rest of the time. I don't know. I just don't really like this book, man. And then the final thing I've been working on this week, I just sort I had sort of put on pause just because I don't know, but I just started reading it again today and that is when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole and oh my goodness, I'm also loving this one. This one scares me. Like today I was reading it, I'm such a wimp, but also like I was reading it a scene that I found so intense, which I don't want to, I don't want to validate my fear because there was definitely a reason why I found it intense. The suspense was killer. It was about something that could really happen that I genuinely fear, something, this is a thriller. And so there's an, an event happening that I genuinely was playing on my worst fears. And so I was like, I was terrified. I had to put the book down for a second or I had to stop listening to the audiobook for a second. This is what I wanna feel when I'm reading a thriller, right? Like I wanna be thrilled. I wanna be like on the edge of my seat. I want to be uncomfortable. I wanna be scared. And that is exactly what I'm getting from this book. Everything is just so, unsettling about this story. By the way, if you didn't know, this is a thriller focusing on the gentrification of a certain neighborhood. We follow one of the black inhabitants of this neighborhood who's a longtime inhabitant. Her name is Sydney. Yes, Sydney. So we follow her as things just start getting weird. And then we also follow a white man whose name I do not remember for the life of me, who has just moved in with his kind of awful girlfriend and he is not a terrible person, but he's just oblivious. So we are both of our main characters are in the dark to some of the darker things happening at this neighborhood or in this town. I don't know. There's a big mystery going on or something. 
but like it's a mystery that I don't even know what it is yet. Like what is the question yet? I don't know, stuff is happening and it is a lot. That's all I can say right now. Well, that was a really quick update on the things I'm reading. I will see you later in the week. Yeah, so I finished Longburn and I don't know how to feel about this book. There are things that I think this does well. I don't think the writing, I didn't really connect with the writing style, but I don't think it's bad. I think that Mrs. Bennet is handled really well. I like how Wickham is handled in this book. And I don't think this overtly did anything that was not an interpretation of Pride and Prejudice, if you know what I mean. But I also don't think that this did everything right. For most of this book, I found it extremely boring, and I do think that at some points I did like it two stars worth and nothing more. I didn't really connect with any of the characters. I couldn't really connect with any of the characters. I felt like I didn't know any of them. And because of that, I didn't connect with their plot. There also just didn't seem to be a plot very often. I didn't care about the romance. It was insta-love. This book tried to talk about certain social issues with race and gender and sexuality and things like that, but it rarely was able to delve as deep as these issues deserved, and it ended up replicating the structures of power without enough critique, in my opinion. And so, I don't know, it's an okay book. I just don't think I would ever recommend it, at least not to my audience, because I'm assuming that y'all like the same books as I do if you're watching me talk about them. This is a very well-researched historical fiction that does delve into some things that wouldn't be talked about so much in historical fiction, such as miscarriage, or the predatory nature of some men or the issues with the British army. But in other ways, it was kind of a book of mischances and I am disappointed. But the good thing is I'm enjoying what else I'm reading. And the other thing that I've been mostly working on is Kindred by Octavia Butler. It's hard to say that I'm enjoying this book because this book is excruciatingly painful to read. Not so much like, okay, it's really hard to read and it is an excruciating book, I think, and it's hard, it is hard to read. But I know that this pain that this book is talking about is not my pain, and so I can't even imagine what reading this would be like for a Black American. This book is brutal, and it really doubles down on its brutality. You know it's gonna be brutal from the very first scene, because the first scene is a flash from the end of the book, and then we start back at the beginning and see how we got there. And the beginning is not as brutal as that ending. And Octavia Butler, every single time she starts a new chapter, which if you, you watch this video, you know that this is about a woman going back in time. Each chapter is her going back in time again and dealing with an episode there, basically. And every single chapter, every single episode that, that Dana has to deal with is more brutal and more heart pounding than the last. Like it is, it is, she has so many narrow escapes and she has to face so many horrible things that are just like sickeningly disturbing. And so it's a hard book to read, but it's also a book that pulls you in because Octavia Butler is just so good at the craft of writing. Like the way that she makes you want to keep reading and makes you need to keep reading to find out certain things or the way that she continually changes this plot and throws something new at you and gives this book something new to focus on with every episode but also keeps her themes the same and doubles down on them and really just explores them so fully. I mean this is a genius book. It's absolutely genius. I mean I am admiring this book, you know, like the, admiring the way it's told, admiring how Octavia Butler just thematically, plot-wise, character-wise, just has pulled this book off and I have to keep reading, I have to see the end, even when I know, like, I dread re picking this book up sometimes because of what I know is gonna go down or, or the, some of the just horrors that she goes into. And I do recommend it if you think you can handle it and if you, and I, I mean, I just think that she's a genius and deserves a lot more credit than she got. And I also got to read a bunch more in When No One Was Watching, When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. And I'm really, really enjoying this too. This is one of the first, this is probably the first modern thriller I've read, I think. Yeah, and I'm really, really, really enjoying it. This is the kind of thriller I like. I would not call this slow, but I would say that the things that are happening right now 
it's very like unsettling the whole way through, but it's not necessarily big, big plot points happening right now. And I'm 50, 50% 50 in about, about 50%. We haven't gotten to any big major reveals or big, big major plot points. A lot of what is happening is happening on the scale of like a neighborhood and we're following people who are kind of outside of whatever's going on. And so we do get a limited perspective with that, but I think it works so incredibly well with this story. There's a mystery, there's something going on and our the people we follow are outside of that like they do not know what is happening but one of them is much closer to that thing than the other like one of them could be directly affected by this thing and i don't know what the thing is i don't know what exactly is going on i can see how Alyssa cole is dropping hints and like putting the pieces in the the plot but i'm still just like how are all these things connected what could connect all of these things and I love that about this book it's so good and I also just really like our two main characters Theo and Sydney I remember their names this time Theo and Sydney have struck up this friendship and I enjoy their friendship I enjoy their relationship I'm not like super invested in the romance but I do know that Alyssa Cole is generally a romance writer um and so I, I like the romance that she seems to be building, seems to be building. Last time I told you I had finished The Fellowship of the Ring and that is still true. I finished The Fellowship of the Ring. It was very, very good. Um, or did I? Did I finish The Fellowship of the Ring last time? I don't know. I finished The Fellowship of the Ring. It was very, very good. And when I started The Fellowship of the Ring, I was reading that and The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter at the end of September. And I put down Rage of Dragons to focus on Fellowship because that was the one I was more into at the time. And I planned on picking up Rage of Dragons after I put that down. Well, I picked it up again and I think I'm starting to get more into it. This has been kind of an interesting ride for me because I really, really enjoyed the first chapter. I really, really enjoyed the first, the beginning. I really, really like this magic system, but I don't know much about it yet. And then Tao's life. I didn't love the directions that it was taking. I didn't love the direction of the, of the plot. Um, now Tao is mostly training and he's coming in contact with more like military and like different, we're on a different trajectory basically. And I kind of am, I wasn't like loving that trajectory, but now I think I'm, I'm getting into it again. I'm really liking it more. I'm seeing more battles, which means more magic system. And that is what I love. And so I'm hoping that that will continue and I will learn to learn why people love this book so much. <laughs> I do think that Evan Winter's writing is really engaging and my friend Udi has told me that he didn't love the beginning of this either and he really ended up liking the direction of this and really really enjoying it and so I'm hoping that that'll be me because I've told him what I want out of this book and he says that I get it. I get more magic system, I get more things, questions about it explained and I want it to come more into Tao's plotline and not just have it be this side thing that other people do and so he told me that you know things are gonna go in, they, things, those things are gonna be incorporated more and so I'm really excited to get to that and for the first time in a while because I've been kind of re reading Slumpy I'm actually like loving everything I'm reading and I'm actually really really excited to continue with this and I think I might read more. I don't know if any other like either like English majors or people who, who like read for like a job or something I don't know if any of you guys believe that but like feel this but sometimes I get like a fatigue or something where I'm like hmm I've read so many things that I you know didn't choose myself that I I'm kind of fatigued with physical reading. That's been happening to me a little bit. And then also audiobooks aren't working for me as well now because of my attention span. But that might be changing because I really am enjoying listening to when no one is watching on audiobook. Things are looking good for my reading life, even though I had to update you a day later than I wanted to. But hopefully I'll still have some good updates on Friday and I can get this vlog out on Saturday. I hope that you guys are having a great reading time like I am and I will see you later in the week. Hi, it is currently Saturday the 24th of October. So the last time I updated you was obviously on a Thursday as you just saw. I usually update you Monday, Wednesday, Friday but when I'm unable to do that or it just works better for my reading to update you on a different day, I usually like to put a few a more a larger amount of time than just like a day like it would have been if I updated you on Thursday and then on Friday because I don't usually read a ton in just 24 hours and so I have made the executive decision to post this vlog a little bit late on 
Sunday morning instead of Saturday morning as usual because I wanted to give myself some time to finish up some, finish up some things, start some things, and get a little farther in things. And now I have a lot of updates to give you. So I finished When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole and I really, really enjoyed this book. I thought it was great from start to finish. I really, really enjoyed it. I don't read that many thrillers, and so this isn't like my favorite genre, my new favorite book or anything, but I think it's a really good book and a really good thriller, and it's one of my favorite thrillers. I've only read a couple, but it's it's one of the good ones. I thought that this book really stuck the landing and was good throughout and solid, just a really solid book, and I'm interested to check out more of Alyssa Cole's writing. I know she's primarily a romance author and romance doesn't tend to be my genre either, but neither does thrillers. So maybe I should check out her Princess in Theory series. I'm interested to check out more of this author's work. I will definitely be watching if she if she if she publishes any more non-romance books as well because she's proven herself to me that she can write outside of that genre as well and produce something that I really enjoy even when I, you know, may not enjoy her primary genre as much as I do others. I really enjoyed when no one was wa is watching and I totally recommend it. I do, I will put trigger warnings in the description, but uh, also these trigger warnings could be a bit of a spoiler if it's, since it is a thriller, but if you're sensitive to race-based violence, then I would not recommend this book. It didn't get the full five stars because I don't love the genres, is what I said. And then also, I didn't love one single part that had to do with the romance. I think that the book may, may have been better without that scene. I thought it served a purpose, and then I was like, um, why, why, why? But also, that just could be a preference thing for me. Either way, I did give it 4.5, but I still really, really enjoy 4.5 stars, obviously, and I still highly recommend them. I also finished Kindred by Octavia Butler, and I am still trying to figure out how to talk about this book. I really enjoyed this book. Even though this book is excruciating to read at times, this book is really hard to read. It is very brutal and just in a, in a really, like the characters in this book are constantly dehumanized and it is about a real time in American history. And so obviously like this book hits close to home for a lot of people, but it is also just a very brutal book to read. And so it's hard to say you enjoy reading it, you know, because sometimes you really don't. And it's so, it's like, you know, you don't wanna put the book down and you're like, what is going on? But also I thought for as much as I can say this, I thought it handled the topics it was tackling really, really sensitively and really, really well in really complex ways. This book does need major trigger warnings though. So I will put that in the pinned comment as well. And again, this is full, this book is, a, is full of race-based violence. And so definitely check those trigger warnings if you need that. I am 271 pages into Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. And I'm really, really enjoying it now. This has really gotten really good. I'm getting a, getting some more insight into the magic and the lore of the world and the history of the world and that is the kind of stuff I crave in a fantasy series more than I crave battles or more than I crave characters and so I am really really excited that I am getting that in this book and I don't know I'm just into it now. Previously I thought that this book was going a bit more slowly for me because I wasn't entirely sure what the point was other than just following Tao as he went through some really hard stuff and vowed to get revenge on the people who caused his life to kind of spiral into a different life, I guess. And we see that whole process happen. And then once it's over, it's kind of like, what are we doing? And then we, we start, you know, the plot kind of starts progressing in a new direction. And I wasn't sure I loved that direction, but now it has gotten to a place where I am really, really interested in where this is going to go. And I'm excited. I'm about halfway through with this, done with this book, and I'm just excited to continue go, to continue on. So because I finished When No One Is Watching and I was listening to that on audio, I picked up my next audiobook for the month, and that is Starsight by Brandon Sanderson. And obviously this one I have the physical copy for, so I can kind of follow along with the physical, and that's really helping me with the audiobooks. And also this narrator I think is amazing, and it's Brandon Sanderson books I always just can latch onto really easily, especially over audio, but like specifically Susie Jackson is an amazing audiobook narrator and 
I've been engrossed the entire time. So maybe this is getting me out of my audiobook slump. This and when no one was watching. I am 100 pages into Skyward and I'm really enjoying it so far. It is so good to be back with Spensa and this world and this plot and these stakes and these characters. And oh, I just love it. And Embot, oh my goodness. I'm just loving this, this book so much. And I'm so sad that I'm gonna have to wait a whole year for the next book. <sighs> I am loving the progression of the plot right now. We are doing something different in this book. This book is definitely very different than Skyward and I loved Skyward so much. It's one of my all time favorite books. And this is definitely different than Skyward, but I think it's going where it needs to go. And I can really appreciate a sequel that isn't afraid to change things up. And it's definitely going to go where the plot and the characters needed to go instead of doing what worked the first time. And so we can really respect that about Skyward. And right now I really like the direction. It's really paying off. Also, Spensa is one of my favorite main characters of all time, if not my favorite main character of all time. She's definitely my favorite Brandon Sanderson main character so far, even over Shallan, even though I love Shallan so much. Shallan's my second favorite. I love Spensa though so much. And the sci-fi elements of this book, this is a sci-fi book, but like the specific elements of this that are sci-fi are just like the sci-fi of my dreams and I'm just loving this so much. This is my favorite thing I'm reading right now. I am so excited to continue reading this. And then because I finished Kindred and I don't have to start another school book for quite a few days now, I have picked up another book, um, another physical book. And this book has made my friend Udi really happy because I picked up I Don't Want to Kill You by Dan Wells, the third book in my friend Udi's, one of his favorite series. Um, and he's been yelling at me to th pick up this book for months now and I finally did. I am 104 pages into it and it's good so far. It's not necessarily my thing still um, a as a book, just this premise isn't th the thing I would really pick up, but I am enjoying it. It's really good. I really enjoyed the, f the second book a lot and so I'm hoping that this will end up being as good because I felt with the second book I I liked the beginning of it better but it wasn't anything special and that's kind of how I'm feeling about this. The beginning is good but it's nothing like crazy amazing yet and I thought the second half of the or the second two second two thirds or something of um, Mr. Monster the second book in the series was fantastic and I feel like if this follows a similar structure Dan Wells likes to do this thing where his beginnings are sort of slow sort of mundane and then the rest of the book the like halfway point or the two-thirds mark or the third mark or something after that things start heating up and things get really cool and that's definitely what happened with mr monster not so much with book one but this book i'm excited to see whether that happens and i fully expect that to happen because it's dan wells and he follows pretty similar plot structures for these books from what i can tell i haven't even told you what this book is about that's terrible of me um this is about a young boy named John Cleaver, who is legally diagnosed with um, a social personality disorder, I think. And he also has, he just, he also has these murderous sort of impulses that he consistently fights with his rules. And these books follow him as he uses his brain to figure out someone else's. He uses his brain and the way his brain works to find serial killers in his town. And so we are doing that. These have paranormal elements to them. I don't want you to go in thinking it's just a normal thriller or whatever because these are paranormal. So yeah, I'm I'm reading this. Uh, we will see how it goes. Thank you for watching this vlog. These are the books that I'm reading this week or have been reading this week, been working on this week. And I will see you next week. Bye.